I'll introduce myself then. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, the first thing I want to do um, before I talk a little bit about myself is to point to the slides. So the slides are online. They're web-based. I tend to put links into my slides. So if I mention things on the slides, you can actually follow the links. And if you go to my timeline, this is my Twitter handle. If you go to my timeline, my last tweet has a link to the online version of the slides. So if you want to follow along or you want to look at the slides later on, you can do so. Um, they're all online. OK. Just a little bit about myself. So I'm Eric. Um, I am a technologist by heart. I, I have a degree in computer science, and I've been doing API things for quite a while. And the reason I'm here is that I kind of moved further and further up, so to speak, in the technology stack. So I started with computer communications, then went into internet protocols, then looked into web architecture, then I did APIs, and now I'm getting more and more interested in sort of how does the API world kind of work in large, or large organizations and what is sometimes keeping them back? So what are the things that you need to look out for that your APIs actually deliver as much value as you want? And one of the things that I've realized that sometimes I think gets lost a little bit because APIs are so much about connecting things is kind of the opposite. And that's what I want to talk about tomorrow. So the the title of my talk has loose coupling in there, and I just want to raise a little bit awareness that in the end, even though APIs connect things, they also separate things, right? You have APIs so that you have something over here, something over there, and these things are different things. They can talk to each other, but they can also evolve differently, and then somebody else can start using this. So. So the value of APIs is not just in connecting things, it's also in having clearly defined boundaries and interfaces, right? That's what they are. And that part, I think, sometimes gets lost a little bit, that really focusing on making those interfaces as well-defined as possible, not just having, we need some APIs, but why do we even want them? What do we want to achieve with them? What are the important properties that we look for in APIs? And loose coupling is one of these things that I think deserve a little bit more attention, so that's what I'll be talking about today. So I've been doing these kind of things for a while. Um, I worked in CA's API Academy for a while, um, and then starting this year, I now um, have a very small team that I work with, so it's two of my partners, uh, Adam and Z. Myself, uh, we call ourselves Good API. So if you if you need a good API, we we are the ones to talk to. And our goal really is to help companies better understanding what APIs do, what it what is important when you want to have an API strategy, how you create one, how you have a program going along with it, so that in the end you don't just have APIs, but you actually have good APIs. Right? That's kind of our pitch. And as part of my previous life in the API Academy, we wrote this book. This book came out last December. Um, it's called Continuous API Management. Uh, there were like the four most active members of the Academy back then uh, wrote this book, Maddie, myself, Ronnie, and Mike. And our goal was really to set the stage, so to speak, in terms of what is important to think about when you do APIs, what is important when you think about large API landscapes. That was the focus in that book, trying to really come up with an idea of what are the important things to think about when your job is not just creating APIs, but creating many of them, managing them, what are the important factors to look out for. And, and one of these important things that I want to talk about today is loose coupling. Okay. So that is really one of the things that I want to talk about, the value of loose coupling. And when you think about why APIs even are a thing today, right? then one of the things where APIs really always seem to have a little bit of a problem, right? I think we, we've heard a number of stories where that doesn't work perfectly, is the alignment of business and IT. Whenever we talk to companies trying to come up with APIs, right? Sometimes that's the business side wants different APIs or they don't know how to talk to the IT guys or the IT guys just create APIs that are a reflection of their implementation systems and not so much of business capabilities. 
So ideally, you want something where the APIs represent fully digitalized value chains. And ideally, and that's kind of where this whole connects to my topic here, ideally, that is something where people can just plug in, right? So when you design something, you design it for reuse potentially, it has individual capabilities exposed as APIs, and if anybody wants to use those things, they can just plug into it, and boom, you have a new customer, right? That's the perfect picture that you have, where you say, well, we start with certain assumptions what people want to do, but there's many more people out there who also want to do stuff, and we don't know them, but they might want to use our offering or parts of our offering. And the better we design those parts and we easier we make it for them to use them without us having to do anything for them, except for having a well-working onboarding process, right? the better it is for us because we get more business. Right? So in the end, what you really want to do is you want to align the IT part that you have that often focuses a lot on agility already and the business part. And this kind of decentralization, right, is something where it really pays a lot if you have the business being able to communicate to IT and really making sure that the APIs that you create really are the APIs that represent what you do as a business. The larger topic that, that's behind all of this, I won't go into this, I always have, I, di I did these things a lot, okay, in my previous job, traveling uh, the world and scaring people about digital transformation. Um, right, like digital transformation, it will kill you if you don't do anything, get some APIs. Um, so that one is something I al also uh, use uh, in, somewhere in Europe, I think. I've, I've been all over the world with my things, right? So this one, you might guess, so the top left one, that was uh, in Japan. Um, the middle one on the top was Australia, top right was India, I think, there was America, there was South America, and South Africa. So digital transformation is a problem everywhere. That's the, the main um, message here, right? People try to really understand how they can build not just some APIs, but good APIs. And I think that really is the problem that a lot of people have, is that they understand it's not important to just have APIs. It's important that you have APIs that actually represent the value that you are producing and allow you to hopefully be more successful by having APIs. And what's a little bit troubling to me, but maybe also understanding is, and just repeating what I said before, this is a quote from an article. If you really want to read the article, you can use the online version of my slides and click on this and you will actually get to the article. It was, I think, on devops.com uh, just last week, I think, or maybe even this week, I don't know. Um, and please don't read all this text or you will be distracted for the next minute. <laughs> what it says is just that, confusingly, I think a little bit, is that there's an increasing chasm between business and IT. Where the business folks who understand that digital transformation is probably a thing, have the understanding or have the feeling that they're not really well connected to the IT folks who are really excited about doing all kinds of cool technological things, right? And I think that really is a topic that you see quite a bit, that there's this gap between business and IT. And in part, that's a problem, I think, because IT is moving so fast, right? So they're always busy doing the latest and greatest thing. And the business side probably feels like they're not really getting involved. What I want to show you in this presentation is that to have really valuable APIs, it is important that the business side does get involved, right? Because what you want are these loosely coupled APIs, right? APIs that are easily usable from the outside, that are robust for somebody to use, and you can even start evolving your own service without breaking the 100,000 consumers that you have. So that's what you want. But you also want something not just that's robust on the technical side, but that's also designed as a well-defined value proposition where somebody says, yeah, that's an API I can use. That it does useful stuff, it's self-contained, there is documentation that helps me to use it. And that is something that you will not get 
if you just let IT people design your APIs, right? That's something where you need the business side stepping in and saying, this is a useful package, this is a useful capability that we want to expose. And, and then you get to the next part where you say, okay, and now we have to design it on the technical level, which also is important, but it's a second step, right? So I think understanding that loose coupling is important and then going the next step and saying it's one of those things that really only work well when business and IT work together well, that's one of the learnings and also one of the problems we have today. And, and uh, just two weeks ago, um, we were at API Day Zurich, right? And it was really interesting. There were so many presentations about the business side and, and mostly sort of the, the takeaway message at, at some point really in the end was APIs are not about technology, right? It's not about technology. It's just connecting things that they can, that people can get stuff done. So thinking of them just as, as technology will kind of limit you. So it's really important to think, like I used to say APIs are plumbing, right? And I still think that's true. Um, plumbing is important, right? You need plumbing to get things flowing. And um, I always jokingly say, right, you would, you would never buy a house because it has great plumbing, right? It's not a thing that you would do that you would look at a house and say, oh, like the water pipes are great. I'll buy that house, right? You look for different things in a house. But on the other hand, if you would go to a house and there's no water coming out of the faucet, right, you would say, well, there's apparently a problem um, and that's pretty essential to my needs, so I probably won't buy that house or if there's not water coming out of the faucet or something else, right? So, so plumbing is important. It's, and I, I love that saying, and, and it, it sounds better in German actually, but it also sounds good in English, I think. Um, APIs are necessary, but not sufficient for digital transformation, right? You, can, you cannot do digital transformation without having a capable API culture. Um, it's not enough having a cap capable API culture. You still need to be set up as an organization to actually deliver the APIs that make sense for you, right? Just designing pointless APIs won't get you anywhere. But it's something to keep in mind that you need to get this right, but you also need to get other things right. And I think like keeping all these things in sight that you need to have sometimes is a bit of a problem. So I, I've seen a lot of organizations where there are situations where, for example, very high up, the leadership has watched some videos or attended some conferences, and then they come home and say, APIs, we need to do APIs, right? So they understand that apparently plumbing is important to get stuff done. But then when you start talking to them and you ask them, now, what's your plan to actually make those APIs happen, right? Tell me about your strategy. Yes, I do agree that having APIs would be good. It's probably good for many organizations nowadays. But how do you make it happen? Tell me more about your strategy. And they, like, sometimes they just have nothing. It's, there's no plan. They just seem to think that the, once you say you have APIs, somehow, like, magically, they will just pop up. Um, and that may happen but you may not end up with the APIs that ideally you would want to have, right? So to me, it's always important to think about that APIs are plumbing, meaning they're necessary, but the things that they do expose are the things where the company creates value. So APIs are, in the end, just the delivery mechanism for the value that the company creates. Right? And you need to make sure that you deliver the right things in the right way. And if you get any of that wrong, you have a big problem. Right? And that means that really the business side needs to understand some API concepts. And that sometimes for us is actually quite a bit of the work that we do, trying to talk to more business-oriented people about no, 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 you need to understand a little bit about APIs. Not everything, but a little bit. because you need to design things so that they work well in the API world, and that's a specific design world to enter, so hear me out, right? And then 
the IT side often then needs to just be able to talk to the business side and say, okay, now that I've understood what kind of capability you would like to deliver through an API, I'll just do my detailed design and then we look at how it works. Right. And in order to implement that, in particular in large organizations, I think you really need a strategy and a program. Right? So a strategy basically just says, what are we doing? Like, what is the stuff that we look for? What additional value can we create by using APIs? What API platform will be available for external internal use? What enablement will teams get to participate? Right? So that's kind of the ideal state where you say, if we do APIs, what do we need for that? And that's your strategy. That won't just magically appear. So you also need a program that says, and this is what we actually put in place so that the things that we want actually become a reality sooner or later. Right? And, and most of you may be familiar with that um, famous Bezos, Jeff Bezos um, manifesto from 2002. Right, or memo it's called, sorry. Right, where he said, henceforth at Amazon, everything will be an API. You people go ahead and do it. Who, those who don't do it, you're fired. That was pretty much it. It was very short. <laughs> it was kind of a strategy. Um, and the interesting part to me always is that when you then read stories, what it took, right, it took many years to actually realize that idea of everything we do is represented by an API and anything we do, we do through APIs also internally, right? It took years. So it's not, it's important to say what you want, but it's also important to say how you think you're going to do it. And that will also cost time and money, right? And that sometimes is, I think, the part that gets a little bit um, not quite treated as strategically as it should be. And when you then think about what do we want to focus on as the part of the story where we say, how do we actually create value with our APIs? Then a big part of that to me always is to make sure that the APIs actually represent value, which then leads to this idea of that loose coupling is an essential component. To me, you could even say, and sometimes you get to that point in more traditional organizations that if you have an API where you don't have any loose coupling in it, it's not even actually an API. Not in the sense that I think that we're all here talking about APIs. It may still be a technical API because it connects to components, but if it's in spirit basically point-to-point -point integration, you don't get any of the benefits that we hear about all day and we talk about all day, right, where you say API economy, we can switch, we can scale up, we have more people joining and all this kind of thing, right? If basically your API is an one, a one-to-one -one integration, right, it doesn't really deliver on any of the value that we hope to get out of APIs. So in, in that case, I think calling it an API is not quite very uh, meaningful, right? So the idea really is to say it's only an API in any meaningful sense if it's loosely coupled, which then gets you to the hairy question of what do you mean by that? And that's actually definitely a fuzzy definition that you can come up with. So a colleague of mine and, and, and myself, we wrote a paper on loose coupling 10 years ago where we tried to explain how the web is loosely coupled. So we went through a whole bunch of things where we said, this is why the web is so much more successful than any other information system that ever existed before, right? And that was a really interesting exercise to think about why is the web so special and why is it so much more successful than the thousands of other systems that people designed before it that kind of did the same. So we went through this exercise and for APIs, I think you can go through a similar exercise of trying to understand what loose coupling really is and in the end, I think it really should be also you asking yourself, why do I even think about APIs in the first place, right? Really, if I think about, I want to have plumbing, you also should think about what do I think is the valuable part of the plumbing that I'm trying to put in, right? If it's just in order to put in plumbing, you could say, well, what's the point, right? So, and if you look at possible values, then you could say one interesting thing would be to say, 
I want to have well-defined APIs, right? Doing one thing and one thing well. That would be to say, I decouple the APIs from other domains, right? It's, it's something that somebody can use, and they don't have to know everything I do. They just have to know this one thing that I'm using, and they can happily use this one thing without understanding that I do a thousand other things as well. That helps a lot, right? If people don't have to go through a thousand pages of documentation. You shouldn't make any assumptions about who the consumer is in terms of technology and their implementation. I think they're pre pretty much covered nowadays. Used to be different. Um, your interface should be decoupled from the underlying implementation, right? So that if you decide to switch out the implementation, your interface remains the same. That is probably something you want to have. You also don't want to be specific in terms of what kind of device or technology people are using. That is probably also pretty important. And then the last thing that also may be important is to say, and you don't want to be specific in terms of when you use that API, it only works well in version 1.12.28, and as soon as we change, everything will break. Right? That's also probably some kind of coupling that you want to avoid. So there are some things you can look at, and I think it's just important to be aware of these things, that they create coupling, and also to be mindful that if you avoid them, you get more loose coupling, which is good. So to just give you a very brief overview of what you can actually do to get to these loosely coupled APIs. From on the business side, what you want is kind of this idea of platforms. So you want an API platform where people can develop on that has a lot of APIs in it, and that API platform can either be externally facing or internally facing. To me, that's one thing that sometimes gets a little bit lost in the whole discussions around platforms, that in big companies, the main value of platforms is not that the platform is available to the outside. The main value is actually that the platform is also what internally is getting used, right? So that you disentangle this whole decades-old entanglement of components where you can't touch anything because everything is somehow connected, right? So, so that's how a platform can help you. And the more you actually build the platform out of nicely, loosely coupled APIs, the more you will benefit from your own design thoughts about loose coupling. And the other thing that's important is that whenever a new API gets built, determining the scope is really important, right? So um, I have, I think, the mandatory picture of Lego. Whenever you talk about APIs, you have to, uh, you have, to have a picture of Lego. Um, and as we all know, right, if, if you build things out of building blocks, it's, it makes a huge difference how the building blocks are shaped. And some building blocks are a little bit more useful than others. And coming up with the right scope for APIs is something that is really important. And that is something where often the business side has much better insight because they know existing customers, they know what people want to do. And typically what they have is either they have um, existing customers, so they have integrations that already exist, and you can say, what do our customers typically do? You can just look at it and figure out how would that look like in an API world. That's a useful exercise. If you design new stuff, you often have user stories that you can translate to API stories where you take out all the user interface specific stuff. And then the important part sometimes is then to also say, and what I'm doing as a designer with an API mindset is not just designing a solution for this one case that I have in front of me, but I also try to design for reuse, right? I'm trying to come up with ideas where I look at future markets, where are possible reuses of the things that I'm building, and then I'm also trying to maybe, if I have several of those scenarios in front of me, I'm trying to re reuse my own components and say, in all of these three scenarios, this one capability could actually be used in these different stories to fulfill that need, so maybe that becomes a good building block. So once you've done that, once you came up with a good scope for an API, then the next step is coming up with technology considerations. And for the technology part, I won't go through that in detail. Um, again, if you want to read up more on it, um, the, the title there that's linked to a little bit more detailed description, all of that. So there's pretty well-known patterns of how you can design APIs, and that's kind of the versioning change management discussion, right? How you can design APIs 
so that you can change them without breaking everybody. So keep those in mind. I think for all of us in the API community, that may by now be something we just assume that, sure, that's how you do it. Um, but that's not what everybody actually does all the time, right? So trying to ingrain that as a pattern that your designers are using is a good idea, and trying to also make that part of your strategy, of your program, right? Saying we have extensibility reviews. When you have a new design, document your extensibility so that we can figure out is it actually um, satisfying those, those needs in terms of loosely cupping versions of consumers and producers. Another thing that often gets overlooked a little bit, again, um, just as a pointer here, we, we did a whole a full day tutorial on that two weeks ago. If you want to look into the materials, it's linked on top again. So some things that sometimes often also get, I think, forgotten is that if you have internal API development, sometimes the developer culture really needs to change when you develop against APIs, right? So if I consume an API, it would be irresponsible of me to treat it like a function call, to just say, I call it, I expect it to work every time. If it doesn't work, something bad happens. I don't care. Right? That is not how you should use APIs. APIs are dependencies you should treat responsibly, and there's a whole bunch of considerations you can go through. Every API that you use is a risk, right? Um, have you thought about replacements? Do you have redundancy in place, if that is something you want to uh, invest in? Is, uh, is the client behaving resilient? Have I thought about maybe combining APIs after learning about them over time? Am I not depending on specifics of the representation so that if the API maybe has to be switched out, I don't have to change my whole um, implementation? And do I actually track my API use so that if something goes wrong, maybe I can actually detect that a little bit earlier? So we have a whole bunch of these things and something we call the continuous API management consumption compass. So we have a couple of these compasses that we have developed based on the book. And that is about API consumption, right? And that's another thing for loose coupling, so for consumers and producers to have this relationship where they are not, um, where they are as little dependent on each other as possible, right? Both sides need to play their part. So trying to make consumers a little bit more responsible is a good idea, but no presentation on kind of versioning and these kind of things can end without mentioning Hiram's Law. Um, who here knows Hiram's Law? Some of you do. Thank you. So it's a, it's a relatively simple thing. So it basically says no matter what you write in your documentation, if you say, I'm switching around my fields, maybe, please don't depend on the current order of fields in the API, there will always be somebody who just doesn't read that, right? And then when you start switching around fields, they will break and they will complain. I mean, you can tell them, I told you so, but there will still be unhappiness. So always keep in mind that loose coupling is good. Loose coupling can be achieved with a number of design decisions, but also there will always be people who don't really look at your deta detailed documentation. So you will always break some people along the way and loose coupling really is kind of the art of trying to avoid that as long as possible, right? So if you have a million consumers of your API, there will always be people where something goes wrong. You just try to minimize that number. You will never get it to zero. Um, that's fine, right? But if you, if you can get it from 10,000 to 1,000, that's already pretty nice. Okay, and that was it. Um, so what I wanted to do Today is just to give you kind of a little bit of a overview of something where I think that's not quite as popular in the API discussions as it should be in some cases, which is loose coupling. So the idea that the more I can avoid having dependencies between consumers and producers, the more I can potentially get value out of my API ecosystem because I have to worry less about breaking things, right? We all want API ecosystems to be dynamic and changing and have many consumers, but we also all want them to be robust and have as few unhappy peers in there as possible. 
and loose coupling definitely focuses into that. And in order to really have good loose coupling, to have very loose coupling, right, you need to think about it both on the business and on the technology level so that you have the right, um, the right scope of APIs and then you also on the technology side you have the right ways of how you produce APIs, of how you consume APIs and then hopefully things will break as little as possible. And that's as good as it gets in the API space, right? As soon as you touch an API, something somewhere will break. You just want to minimize that. Okay. With that, um, I would like to thank you once again. There's the address of the, uh, of the slides. If you want to read the slides online, they're available there. Um, if you want to follow me, here's my information. And um, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Eric. Very, very important lessons. And are there any questions for Eric? We have time for a few. Any brave ones? No, this, is, this was it, and you all understand everything perfectly, good. There's a quiz, isn't there? Yeah. Yes, I, I will ask questions when people yeah, leave. And exactly. You can only leave if you answer all of them. Exactly, right. good. <laughs> that, that's, that was the plan. Thank you, and then we have the next speaker, which, who is the final speaker. Uh, so you have the honor of ending this. API Des Finland, uh, Alan Knabe from Kone. How to design and publish API products that your customers and partners actually want. So you see that we have this theme going on with mm -hmm. this last yeah. session. All right. Hi, guys. My name's Alan. I'm very happy to see there are a lot of people still here. You know, when I looked at the, uh, the order, I was like on last. I was like, oh, my God, I'm the last guy. But then I kind of realized that they were saving the best till last, right? That, that's it. So, yeah. So, um, yeah. <laughs>